So you all recognize this as the World Trade Center in New York City. Um, I have kind of an interesting connection to the World Trade Center. For five years, I worked in the New York Life Home Office, and I lived in Salt Lake City. I like to tell people that I had the longest commute in the country. And so I'd go into New York City once a month for five consecutive years, and I'd work in the New York Life Home Office, which is on um, between 26th and 27th, Park Avenue and Madison, or, uh, Madison Avenue. Well, as I was working there, I finally figured out my coworkers did not want to hang around in the city at night to go to dinner with me. They wanted to go home. So I learned how to get on the subway. I'd take the subway down. I'd come out right about, oh, right about here. And I'd go into this tower because they had a TKTS outlet and I could go buy show tickets for half price for that evening. So I did that probably a hundred times. So I'd go into the World Trade Center, come out. I'd also go up and look from the observation deck. I like photography. So I, I felt familiar with the towers. Well, one day a good friend of mine, Mike Norseth, uh, said, Jerry, would you talk to a client of mine who lives in New York City? I said, okay, tell me what's up. He said, he works in the, for uh, Cantor Fitzgerald. He's a bond trader. And he actually supervises a trading floor for a particular type of bond. He says he's got a million dollar Northwestern Mutual policy a whole life, and I think he should have another million. I said, sounds right. He said, well, the problem is, is he can't stand his Northwestern Mutual agent, so he wants to drop the policy. Now, that was not my company. Wouldn't hurt us in the least if he did, but how many agree that Northwestern is a terrific company? and that a well-established whole life policy, it's really hard. If we started a horse race, I can argue my company, but if, if they've been around the track two or three times, it's hard to catch up. So I said, well, yeah, I'll go talk to him. So I get off the train, go in, security go up to the 100th and second floor, if I remember correctly, and, and I love buildings, so this is really exciting. I talk with him, convince him that he needs to keep the Northwestern policy. He says, why are you fighting for Northwestern? I mean, you're explaining it. This is what he said better than my own agent did. I said, because it's a great policy. You'd be foolish to let it go. And then we talked about the additional million and he bought what was then called a variable universal life with New York Live. So I felt like that was a really good day. Fast forward September 11th, 2001. I'm at an AFA convention in Salt Lake City. We're in a, what's called a CLU breakfast and all of a sudden someone comes running in and says, we, we're sorry to interrupt the meeting, but there's been a terrible tragedy in New York City. So we all go out and find our way to the monitors, and sure enough, those airplanes crashed into those buildings. So what do you think my first thought was? Wow, um, Tim, is, is he okay? Well, I tried calling Mike, but I couldn't get him for a full day. And when I finally got him, I picked it up, and this is what he said, it's a direct quote. I said, Mike, it's Jerry. He said, he killed him. That bastard Bin Laden killed my best friend. He killed him. He's dead. Whew. In that moment, I was standing in his office, which the design of the World Trade Center is, you have lots of columns with narrow windows that go head to floor, and as I stepped over to the window, your heart sort of races like, ah, I'm gonna fall. And there was the Statue of Liberty in the distance. And that's the memory I have of this person. To New York Life's credit, I thought it was just awesome. Uh, for the first time in their history, they set up a special claims unit and they paid claims even though a death certificate had not been issued because they were able to establish that he was there on the floor that day. Northwestern paid the claim, and I knew that no matter what happened to his family, they were financially secure. And all of that happened almost instantly. Is there any sort of experience that can, can change that? I mean, a million dollars is $40,000 a year income, isn't it? Three to $4,000 a month. He would have dropped that policy had Mike and I not been there. He would not have bought the policy, the new one, had Mike and I not been there. 
we changed a family forever. 